Hi, this is Cindy with Everett Fire, and I am going to walk you through some of what is new in the newest version of Fire Mobile coming out on October 1st, Fire Mobile 2018.4. Uh, when you log in, the first thing that you will notice is that the login screen is now just the username and password. You're going to enter in if you're in doing a generic unit login, enter in that information and it is going to take you to a secondary login screen uh, where you will then enter in your apparatus number. Um, the uh, other fields, just like before, you're not going to put anything in ID 1 or radio number. Vehicle number, if your agency chooses to use it, uh, you can, but it's not required. The important thing on this, if you are logging in on an MDC in a rig, is that you want to make sure that primary AVL is uh, checked because, uh, let me hit continue to get this going, uh, because uh, one of the biggest changes in the upgrade is that you now have the ability to log in at multiple times using the same login information. So you can be logged in as Engine 6 here on uh, an MDC. You can also be logged in back in station on the desktop, and it's not going to do that weird thing where you have to register one way or the other but the um, sort of flip side of that is you do have to tell it if you have multiple logins um, which one you want as to show on the map as the um, primary AVL. So if you log in, and um, I am also logged in in the desktop back at station, um, this will pop up if, it, if that uh, login is already being used somewhere. It says it's already being used. In this particular case, I'm going to tell it to continue with Engine 6. Yes, that is the unit that I meant to choose. Um, and yes, I know that it's registered somewhere else as well. So um, we go through. Uh, I am now logged in. I know that this unit is the primary AVL because of this new little icon up here in the corner. Um, if it has a star on it like that, then that means that this is the the device that it is getting its uh, GPS location from uh, and displaying on the map. Otherwise, here on the um, login screen where you enter your crew information, no changes here. Uh, there is one fix that I will tell you about, which is, I don't know if you've ever noticed, sometimes you will enter in your crew here, and when you go to your apparatus status page, they do not appear in the same order that they are listed in here. Um, that is a fix that, that they've done now. Whoever you put in personnel ID number two, if you use that and you enter your driver there, um, that is the order that they will show in the apparatus status page. Um, so uh, that's one fix to tell you about. Changes to the dispatch screen. So when you are dispatched to a call, uh, again, it looks very similar to before, a couple of changes. Uh, one is that uh, we have gotten our primary caller and phone number back on the dispatch screen. For those of you who uh, like to have that information handy, uh, they now put it, put it back where, where it was so you can get that easily. Also, uh, your unit is now one of the units that's listed here on the bottom uh, as I change my information down below. And uh, you appear along with everyone else. Uh, under the alerts section, if I go to my alerts, uh, I can see all the prior incidents. But uh, now all these prior incidents, if I actually wanted to dig, dig into it, um, these are now uh, hyperlinked to the actual incident, it will pull up on a, uh, on a prior alert for the same address the call information for that other call uh, a lot easier than it would before. Uh, let's see, no big changes on the EMD side. Uh, for those of you that don't know it though, uh, a quick tip uh, since I, I've got you here. Uh, once you click on the EMD screen, if you hit the end button on your keyboard, it will take you to the bottom thing on the list, which is the thing that you are probably most interested in. Uh, it's that short report. It's the first one that's entered. Instead of having to use your mouse to kind of scroll up and down this, just click on it and click end to get to the bottom one on the list. And then you can use your arrow keys to, to tab up through it from there. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, oh, uh, the narrative section over here. So in order to help give you a little bit more room in this, what you're going to want to do the first time that you're in the new version is to make some changes to your narrative grid settings. Uh, if I come over here to the left, 
and I come to grid settings, you will see the things that you can choose to display. The two that you want to make sure display are critical and narrative. Uh, I don't care if you leave everything else on or off, but those two, critical and narrative, are the ones for sure you want to stay. And then, at least for right now, let's click that show narrative column headers because what that lets us do is now that I have these headers here, I can change the order. Um, and I know that I need this critical bar, and then I also, uh, but the next thing that I want to see is narrative. Everything else is sort of um, I don't really care what date time it came in uh, or any of this other stuff. I want to have as much room on the screen as possible for my narrative. So now I'm going to take this on the header and I'm going to expand this out to see as much narrative as possible. And then if I'm happy with the layout and I want to save myself this extra little bit of room, I can come back into the grid settings and then turn back off the column headers once they are in a way that that uh, you'd like it displayed. Um, that critical narrative, if your dispatcher marks a narrative critical, let's see if I can do that here. Um, that little exclamation point that you see right there, that's how in a long strand of narrative, how your dispatcher or EPD or anyone would um, mark something as critical. Um, that particular narrative isn't all that critical, so I'm going to go ahead and change that back, but that's why you want that little box to stay there, even though you can't really see it with the, with the header gone. One last thing on our map here. Um, I can tell that I've got some of my layers turned on um, uh, with, the, with the upgrade, some of the layers switched back to the default on-off that we might want to change. Um, if I zoom in here a little bit, I'm just using my keys. Uh, those little pink circles tells me that the school buffer zones is on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make the changes to, to this by going to the mapping page. Um, but know that when you make a change on the mapping page, it's not going to display on your mini map in the dispatch screen until the next your next dispatch that you get after this. So um, without further ado, let's go to mapping. So uh, again, uh, when we're here on the mapping page, I noticed that some of my layers have, have changed, defaulted back to, to the way they were. If I want to turn off that school zone buffer, for example, I'm going to come into the layer selection and I am going to turn off the school buffer. Other ones that you might need to turn on or off. Um, Police Beat and Police ORI, if you come into your map and it has all the colors turned on, you turn that off by, by going to PD Response ORI. Uh, likewise, if you come into your map and you have all these little blue numbers, oh, I'm not at a, the right zoom level. If I zoom in one more level, um, to get the these blue numbers, those are police beats. Sometimes those default on. Um, you can unclick that to, to get rid of those. And then I can rehide my layers. But um, some of the uh, great things that came back uh, on or are, are a little bit different in this version. Um, one of them is if you usually filter by my FDID, you can still do that here. But we have a new hotkey if we hit the letter F. Um, that will filter out everything that's just corresponding to my agency. Um, also, we have the return of R for routing. Yay! So, if I click R, then it will calculate and there's my route. Uh, and all I did was hit uh, routing to get that. I can also show the summary and get the turn by turn or I can hide it and it will just show me what the next directions are. If when I am done, if I want to turn my routing off, say I've gotten to this call and now I need to head to the hospital uh, and I don't want to have it keep rerouting me back to the scene that I just left, uh, you hit N for route none to turn that routing back off. R to turn it on and N to turn it off. Um, so let's say the same call. Um, now I want to get driving directions to go to the hospital. The other neat thing that I can do is I can hit A 
for find address and type in, if I type in prov, select it from the list. And I've found that if you click on where it says venue, then it uh, executes the, the command to, to find that. It'll zoom in to that location on the map where Providence is. And then I can click on Y, which is route to find address. I don't know why it's Y, but it is. Um, so A will bring up that find address screen, and then Y will route you to this new address as opposed to your scene address or anywhere else that, you, that you're looking to get driving directions for. Likewise, uh, you would use N to clear the route when you're done. Uh, and then to get rid of my find address, my little brown pin on the map, I hit X in order to get rid of that. You can also do all this from your left-hand menu by coming and clicking in here to routing. Um, I can route to my call or route to find address, or I can use the search map functions in order to find the address and clear the address, uh, but those hotkeys make for a little bit faster way to get around. One more fixed dimension on the map. Uh, previously, if you had follow me turned on and you were using it in conjunction with rotate on, uh, so that when you were moving around the city, the the map was moving with you and as you were turning it always had you facing up on the map. Uh, then one thing that you might have noticed is that the directional arrows uh, were not correct for your actual direction of travel. Uh, they have also fixed that. Lastly I want to talk a little bit more about primary AVL. Um, that's where we're, we see up here that this is the device that, uh, that the map is showing the GPS location for. If you wanted to see other devices that are logged in using the same username, I can click on that icon and uh, click here and that will give me a list of uh, all the other places that uh, are using the same username. Uh, right now this is my MDC and this is me logged in back at station through VPAC. Um, uh, as uh, if your agency is one that is going to be utilizing um, CrewForce, which is the iPad or iPhone app that is, should also be rolling out um, in the next couple of months. If you have more than just your MDC logged in on a device that has um, GPS functionality, it would also list it here. But if for whatever reason, um, if I wanted to change it to a different device, I could change. It will let me know that this is no longer the primary AVL, and you will also see that my star went, over, went away up here. If I click on it again, I can just as easily switch it back uh, if, for whatever reason, it was uh, a mistake that, that some other login grabbed that, um, that GPS location for the map. Also, if you click on an incident and you see a track all devices feature, uh, I only have one unit that I'm logged in as is GPS, so if I click on it, nothing's going to happen. But uh, if, if there were multiple devices that all were GPS capable, um, I could show all those devices on the map. And it would show the primary AVL as a fire engine and the other logins as uh, little computer screens. Uh, and that's how you can tell on the map if you were tracking more than one device that had uh, GPS capability. And um, that's all the big stuff. If you have any questions or anything comes up when we go live in the new version, um, be sure to contact your um, subject matter expert for your agency. Hopefully they can help it through, or uh, if not, they can pass it up the line and, and we can see what we can do. Thanks. Stay safe.